board's meeting for August 21st, 2020 uh, to order. And uh, invocation, please. And that'll be Brian. I'll do that. All right. Dear Lord, we just come before you this evening, this afternoon, and we thank you that we're able to still gather in spite of uh, everything that's going on around us with COVID, the limitations, et cetera. We just uh, thank you that we have an opportunity to continue to uh, meet and uh, represent all of us here at Sandy Pines. Lord, we just uh, pray for continued wisdom as we work together as a board and with administration. We thank you too for continued pre protection and for the recovery of those that were just impacted uh, with sickness recently. All of this was navigated amongst the staff and state and local levels. And, and we again just want to thank administration, thank Jeff for leading us so diligently with the state. And thank you too for the wonderful staff that uh, picked up the slack and covered uh, where necessary and were eager to get back to work. We thank you too and just ask for protection to keep us safe and healthy as we enter the remaining half of the season or less than half the season remaining. Just bless our time together this evening. Help us to enjoy our fellowship this weekend and may we be a blessing to those we come in contact with and all that we do. And it's in your name that I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brian. All right. We'll stand. Honor our country with the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, roll call, please. Alan Carpenter? Here. Rex Day? Here. Brian Elling? Here. Jenny Hager? Here. Jim Hawk? Kelly Johnson? Here. Dennis King? Here. Chad Ostrom? Here. And Paul Temple? Here. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to approval of the minutes of the regular session of July 24th, 2020. Everyone had the opportunity to did we receive those? Is there any other corrections or addendums? I need, need one. Okay. Can I make a motion to accept? Support. It's been moved and supported to approve the minutes of the regular session of July 24th, 2020. Mm -hmm. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed the same. That motion carries. Approval of new park members. New park members uh, for the past month, 69 new park members, 22 retired. 47 active, and the majority, we've got 18 in their 40s, 14 in their 50s, and 27 in their 60s. That's the majority of the, the population. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve the new park members. So moved. Second. Then moved and supported to approve the new park members as presented. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed the same? That motion carries. Under item number eight, we have finance. We'll start with the approval of the July 2020 financial statements of Sandy Pines Wilderness Trails. Uh, Jenny, do you want to say anything? And then Kimberly, give us an update. Um, yeah, uh, the finance committee met last week, Wednesday. Um, we reviewed the July financial statements, the check distribution for um, Sandy, Sandy Pines Wilderness Trails. And we had some discussion, not a whole lot. We um, Kimberly will go over some of the details, but we are very pleased with the way the month of July looked now that things were opened up and uh, busier in the park. You, it was definitely reflected in the July financial statements. So the committee approved them 100% unanimously. Thank unanimously. you. Kimberly, do you have anything you want to add? Sure. Um, I'll start with Sandy Pines. Um, Operation Cash as of July 2020 is up approximately 920,000 or 38% over prior year. Um, I do want to make mention that the balance in that cash account does include the receipt of the PPP loan still, about 512,000. There um, also is an expectation to reimburse about 991,000 from FEMA with the final FEMA reimbursement, so that's expected to come back into the operations cash account. Um, total member accounts receivable balance is significantly down. Um, we're noticing a trend with more members um, being up to date or making prepayments for next season. The Charles Schwab investment account as of the end of July is up 148,000 or approximately 8.5%. 
Um, other accounts receivable you will notice um, has a large fluctuation in there, and that is um, a result of the FEMA reimbursement expected to receive for 991,000. Um, current liabilities are up 872,000. Um, that is related to a temporary, um, just a timing, the most recent FEMA building payment for about 400,000 plus was in there in addition to the PP loan of 512,000. Total net income is down 10% approximately, or 1% from prior year. Um, as Jenny had stated, um, we have really turned around the trends in the season. Um, so compared to last month, we were approximately 55,000 down at 3.3%. And in June, we were approximately 276 or I'm sorry, in June. And then in May, we were approximately 276,000 um, below last year, or 16%. So the reopening of activities within the park has really helped to turn this around from May through July. Sales and hospitality income is up 154,000 compared to a decrease of 60,000 last month. Um, site rental income is still down about 22,000 as of the end of July compared to 222,000 at the end of June. Um, so our cabin rent, or our camping rentals have really um, turned around and are booked every weekend through the end of the season. Um, administration that income is down 167,000. Flea markets have been canceled through the end of the season, um, as we mentioned last meeting. Um, maintenance income is down 55,000. The majority of that decrease of revenue continues as a result of COVID. Um, public safety income is down 60,000. Um, the change is specifically related to a decrease in guest fees and violations um, early on with the stay at home order. Recreation net income is 18,000 higher than prior year. Um, so our net income is higher and a lot of that is re related to the delayed um, hiring of staff um, with the startup of the season. And resort services income is up 56,000 due to the natural increase of dues for COLA and operational expenses are down 97,000 compared to prior year, just with the early months of COVID. Um, last park and garden, um, gross sales is up 24,000, um, but cost of goods sold is also up 24,000. So we'll continue um, watching that through the end of the season. And um, rent, Rentals net income, so our current rentals is down 13,000, um, and that's related to the multiple cancellations of reservations through the pandemic and the slower start of the season. So that's my report on Sandy Pines for July. Perfect. Any questions or comments for either Jenny or Kimberly? No. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion <coughs> to approve the July 2020 financial statements for Sandy Pines Wilderness Trails. So moved. Second. Been moved and supported. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed the same. And that motion carries. So now we'll look at the July 2020 financial statements for Lake Monterey Golf Course. Jenny. Okay. Again, we, have, we, we reviewed the check distribution and the financial statements for the golf course for the month of July last week when we met. And um, those were also unanimously approved. Um, we had a small amount of discussion there. Um, the golf course looks like it's doing well and the numbers reflect that. Um, we've had good weather, so that has really helped. Um, and I think people want to get outside and have some activity where they can do things outside and not being re mm -hmm. so restrictive being inside. So I think that's been great for the golf course this year. For sure. Thank you. Um, Kimberly? Um, my update for Lake Monterey Golf Course, um, operations cash as of the end of July is down approximately 32,000 or 8%. Um, that does also include the 35,000 from the PPP loan. So we are, and which is expected just because of the payment that was made last year. <coughs> Current liabilities are in line with prior year um, with the exception of the PPP loan. Um, the gross revenue is up 6.6 thousand in July compared to being down 47,000 or 11.8 percent in June. So the very big turnover from June to July. Um, total operational expenses is increased um, 50,000. Um, Stay at home order 
um, delayed that activity on the greens and then also helped recoup some of the previous expense in the off season as there's a uh, major repair done to some equipment and the courses during the off season. Um, overall, total net income for the golf course is down approximately 17,000 or 16 percent, but still in line with budget and um, looks good for um, ending out the year as of the end of July. Two months to go. <laughs> yeah, great. Thank you. Any questions or comments uh, related to the golf course for either Jenny or Kimberly? Nope. Hearing none, is there a motion to approve uh, the financial statement as presented for July 2020 Lake Monterey Golf Course? Uh -oh. Support. Been moved and supported. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The that motion carries. Okay, now we're down to the Sandy Pines Wilderness Trail operational and capital budget for fiscal year 2021. Uh, this is, uh, like I said, we've had uh, budget presented uh, from administration and staff and and kind of worked through and uh, adjusted some stuff and then we've seen it again. So this is the final time to approve it. And we'll let Kimberly kind of highlight what we have there. Um, in administration, we do have an increase in the facility rental for the FEMA North Shore building um, and rentals. Um, the maintenance, um, we have a minor change from current year budget. Um, public safety had a minor change from current year budget, so not much activity to report there. Recreation did include a net, um, a net 50,000 expense for the anniversary budget, but we are looking to recoup those just from offsets and um, activities that can bring money in to offset that. But we do have a conservative cushion in there just in case. Resort services, um, we had an increase in the resort utilities um, with the completion of the FEMA North Shore building. We wanna recap the expectation for the utilities going through the park there. Lease operations, we did include an increase to food truck income. It's been a good asset to the park and um, looks like we can possibly add some more in the next year. Um, Park and garden rentals. Um, we have minor changes um, this year from current um, from current year's budget. Um, retail. We do have an increase in gasoline income, um, and that's projected after one of our um, capital projects on the list for um, the installation of a new gas pump because we we're just um, the gas pump that's out there right now is antiquated. It's only available to our staff right now and we'd really like to utilize that for safety of members going across the street mm -hmm. and trying to um, keep that in there plus it's just reaching its useful life and um, with the certification and inspection of the tank it's time to do that replacement sales um, we had minor changes to the current year budget for that as well i do want to mention that dues um, the current dues are were $1,882 and the CPI index for the bylaws as of March 2020 um, was an 1% increase. So that will increase the dues um, $14 for next year. So it will, um, your the total dues for next year will be $1,896. So um, including the assessment. And that's and then that's including the assessments too. So that that's the final total dollar amount. So that includes all the assessments um, that are included on there. The um, the um, golf courses will be in its sixth year of the assessment, and the capital will be in its fourth year. I think. Do you have that up there? I Is think so. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> And then, um, so that's going to be on the summary that will be posted on the web page um, after today's meeting. Um, so you can look at that, but the front page will show the summary of all of that and roll through the budget. Um, I do want to mention the capital needs that we have targeted for next year. Um, it does include the second phase of cost of the North Shore FEMA shelter. So it's that second phase of the 300,000 that was set um, out of the capital. Um, there also is the phase three fridge going from phase six to phase three for safety concerns and issues that have been brought to our attention that we need for safer travel for our members and guests. Um, there was also a request, um, and this is per compliance, um, for the installation of a new drain field. So this is a response to some compliance issues we need to re 
reply to. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a DAC system um, in line that we are considering for rental pontoon, which would be offset by corresponding income that's generated, but using um, some capital funding to help initiate that um, venture. And then um, software upgrade and database development is another um, item that is on there. We currently are utilizing about four plus systems. Um, we installed a new system in 2016. Um, it's brought us from DOS to a new, <laughs> newer current system. However, they are fragmented and it's very daunting on staff and as a result um, on our members and just looking at what we can do to streamline all of those processes to make it more efficient. Um, and then last, we are looking also, again, upgrading systems, the swipe card. We still notice people having trouble with the swipe cards. Plus, when we are looking at doing repairs at the gates for those different swipe cards, um, we have issues with the cost and maintaining those because it is outdated. So we are looking at the possibility and the cost of a camera system for vehicle license entrance where um, it would read the license plate to let you in. So something we're looking at and then um, that would be offset by corresponding reduced expense in the budget by not having to maintain those white cards, um, that gate infrastructure. So those are the updates of the Sandy Times budget reports. Thank you. Great. Any questions or comments from anybody? Any concerns with them? We had opportunity to see it um, several times, but this is the, the final time. So we need to speak up if you've got a question or if there's something you're not comfortable with or understand. All good. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the Sandy Pines Wilderness Trails operational and capital budget for fiscal year 2021. So moved. Second. It's been moved and supported. All in favor signify by aye. 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 The same. And that motion carries. So we also have the uh, approval of the Lake, uh, Lake Monterey Golf Course operational capital budget uh, season. So this is the final consideration for this as well. And we actually just have two minor comments on that one. Um, we did pull through um, Reflective in the budget, there was an increase in member green fees um, this current year. And so we just pulled that through the budget. So it's reflective in next year's budget. And um, on the capital side, we do have targeted the second installation of the well for the greens. So um, we've been pulling um, out of the 150, pulling the full $25 per membership assessment for the capital needs. We can take up to 25, so we've been pulling that full amount to the capital needs, and we're at the point to install the second um, second well, so that's targeted for next year. And those are my only reports on Lake Monterey. Great. Uh, same thing. Is there any questions or comments, concerns? And if not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the Lake Monterey Golf Course Operational Capital Budget for fiscal year 2021. So moved. Good. Then moved and supported. All in favor signify by aye. Aye. Opposed aye. the same. That motion carries. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Kimberly and Jeff and all the staff. I know a lot of time and effort. Like you said, this process started months ago. This is just the, the end of it. So uh, thank your team for putting that together and, and getting us all that information and, and we'll kind of highlighting the priorities of the park. Like you said, at the with just a $14 increase in dues, but yet a lot of improvements to come. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for the support. Under executive personnel, um, comments from the chair. I'll just take a moment. Uh, this is my last official business meeting. Um, tomorrow we have our meeting, but that's more of a highlight of the park and, you know, where we're going and what we've accomplished. So I just want to take a minute to, you know, thank the members for giving me the opportunity to serve the last three years on the board and, uh, the staff, you guys have been awesome. I mean, you've made uh, it, it very easy to uh, to make us look good. Um, you know, we, we make a lot of decisions, but you guys are on the ground every day, and uh, I truly appreciate your efforts. And then uh, um, last but not least, the board. Uh, the rest of you guys have, have been very supportive and, uh, you know, worked with me. So, you know, I think we sometimes get a bad rap, but we try to do what we think is in the best interest of the overall organization and 
and the future of the park, not just our personal needs for today. So hopefully we continue that spirit and that's really what it's about. We're here to do, you know, to make sure this place is uh, profitable and, and maintain our investment for well into the future. So uh, again, I just want to thank you guys. So that's all I have to say about that. Comments from the park president. All right. So since this is Rick's last one, we have a little uh, token of appreciation. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, disregard the retirement. <laughs> <laughs> here. We, we know you're still, uh, we know you're still working, but um, again, um, we appreciate your leadership um, and support on the board for the last three years. This year, your leadership is chairman. So um, the guidance that you provided me in my first year, because as we have talked before, this is not the year that anybody <laughs> has thought, <laughs> thought we were going to have. So um, a lot of a lot of phone calls and a lot of guidance on, on your end uh, to me. So thank you very much. Yeah, and we're going to we're going to miss you. So thank you. There you go. Thank Congratulations. You. Um, additional comments, just a quick update on the, we've received a lot of calls on, hey, the, the employee that had COVID, is that person back, uh, things of that nature. So um, we can't share any details on, you know, the actual who it was and, and things of that nature. But after the isolation, the 14 day isolation, all employees are back. Um, they started uh, back on the 7th of August and um, really it, we were blessed to just have um, a minor incident in that uh, as we've communicated over um, the entire course of the year here that a lot of correspondence with the Allegan County Health Department, we, I've talked to them on a regular basis uh, at least once a week. and. Part of that process is, hey, have we heard of anything else uh, pertaining to Sandy Pines, contact tracing, any other issues of that nature? And we have not been uh, communicated that there's any other incident here at Sandy Pines. So when you think about where we started and where we're at almost the end of the year, it's been a uh, we've been blessed that so far we've only had that one incident. So I continue to knock on wood on that. We still got some more to go, but uh, uh, the staff is back and uh, and healthy. Um, committee committee volunteers. We are still searching for committee volunteers for the 50th uh, anniversary committee rules uh, committee safety, security, and finance. So again, if you uh, uh, we we absolutely act, uh, want our members to get involved in 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 the park. Um, on these committees and, and help improve our park. Contact Kathy Brott. She has a, a form there. Um, you can give her a call or email her at kathy at sandypines.com and uh, she can get a, a committee form to you. And uh, we'd love to have some additional committee members. And I'll give some additional updates when we get into the member questions. So that's all I have for now. Great. Any questions for Jeff on any of that? Anybody? Comments, we're good. Under old business, um, tomorrow's election. Uh, Jeff can give us an update on that, where it's going to be. Yep, so um, two things on the election date. Again, there, there's been some communication as to uh, the location. We, um, we're going to go due to uh, volunteers. Um, we have one polling station that's at the picnic to, uh, pavilion in phase one there in the core area by the dairy dip. And uh, we've been receiving ballot uh, fill outs here and putting in the, the ballot box uh, throughout really the last month. So we appreciate everybody exercising <coughs> that vote. The other item on this is uh, we've gotten some questions as to, hey, why did the date move from the 15th to the 22nd? Uh, when we look at the calendar, um, August 1st fell on a Saturday and how calendars that I've been involved with from an operational and financial standpoint, when the first is on a Saturday, that is really the end of July. And then your first full week has been um, that following first full week of August. Uh, we did go out and get a, a legal opinion on that as well, just to make certain that we were compliant with our bylaws and we were compliant with uh, um, not any, I think, 
we can use it since it's Rick's last meeting here. Any secret squirrel, right? So, uh, so we were uh, we were complying and doing that. So, just a reminder that the election uh, is tomorrow, and uh, exercise your right to vote. Thank you. Any questions or comments? I would just like to to echo. You know, thanks for all the volunteers, uh, uh, people. A lot of people uh, make that happen every year, and, and we appreciate them stepping up and, and working to be part of the park and helping out in that regard. Um, the other item under old business is license plate update. Again, that's a hot topic, so uh, Jeff's going to give us an update on where we're at and what the expectation is with that. Right. So license plate updates, we have had the license plates. The plan was we were going to have the appointment set at the public safety office, and then we had that isolation incident. Uh, so I, I personally sat at the public safety office for two weeks, and I don't think you wanted me to check out your license plates and, <laughs> and do that for you. I would have messed it all up. Uh, we have the full staff back. They started uh, receiving calls this week, accepting appointments. We should see uh, license plates throughout the park today. There has been some questions about, you know, drilling holes into your into your new golf carts. Uh, there are instructions out there on how to mount those uh, plates to your golf cart. If you are concerned about drilling any kind of holes into it, uh, we have had some members uh, share their knowledge that there's a double sided uh, 3M tape that is used really, really well during the uh, seasons. Uh, a couple of individuals have said they've used it and they're on season two or, two or three. So if uh, you're concerned about drilling holes into your golf carts, that's an option of using that 3M tape. The plan is uh, to continue to hand these out through the rest of the season. And then uh, our prior communications have been uh, starting April uh, when you come back to the park. Um, we have to have all the license plates on and we'll, we'll we'll start having PSO check those and enforce those. So we'll do an inventory at the end of the season to see how many have been handed out and how many we still have left. Perfect. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah, just as a, a reminder, to save yourself some time, go into your member account and the far right corner of that bar is add golf cart and enter your information in there yep. prior to going to the PSO to save a ton of time. Yeah. Good reminder. Great reminder. <laughs> and one other reminder on that, uh, we have had some feedback. If you try and do it on an iPhone, sometimes it's challenging. Make sure you do it on an iPad um, or a, a desktop computer. or a laptop. It'll uh, it'll allow that screen to be wider so you can fill out all the information. So. Thank you. And uh, uh, just to iterate, uh, you know, what was said in case somebody didn't catch it, the, the expectation is April, when we come back, all members, April of 2021, the expectation is that everyone is at that time is in compliance with the, the golf cart plate rule. So just Correct. to make sure that there's no confusion on what the expectation is. Uh, taking appointments now, so whatever works the most convenient for you, but that's what we're looking at for compliance. So that's the important thing. Thank you. Uh, under item number 11, new business. We'll start with the discussion for a resolution to change the speed on the lake. Um, this is a process This come to us as a, a suggestion or a concern. And what we're going to do, you know, this is just to get the information out at this point and to uh, so everybody, all the members know uh, what we're discussing, uh, what the, the parameters of what we're looking at changing and how it might apply to you and then you can uh, provide feedback whether it's a good idea a bad idea or you know you don't think it really matters either way and then this will not be voted on until uh, next month so this is an opportunity for everybody to weigh in on a proposed change that might directly affect you and i think to again applaud this board that's uh, one of the things that we've tried to do is to uh, get the information out in front of everybody early enough so everybody can make an informed decision and provide feedback instead of uh, the board passing a resolution to change something, then we get all the feedback after the fact. So again, I, I thank you guys for uh, going along with that. And I think it's, it's shown that it, it proves a lot of uh, openness to try to get the information out so people can uh, make an informed decision one way or another. So with that said, I'll turn it over to Jeff and then maybe Paul can give us an update. I know he was uh, involved in that process as well. Paul, do you want to give your update on the lake study and the speed? 
Uh, I can. Uh, the I've been blessed part of the Lake Committee. We've met uh, weekly now for the last uh, six weeks. There have been uh, six or eight of us that have been delving into a lot of the uh, rules and regulations in the lake and find out ways to, uh, amongst a number of things, but make it uh, more safe. Uh, one of the concerns uh, that was brought to our attention is that uh, uh, between the times of 8.30 p.m. and 10 a.m., uh, the lake speed is 10 miles. Uh-oh, oh, we're losing you. Oh. Miles an hour. And all right, so there's some challenges with that because with the uh, 10 miles an hour, uh, a lot of boats don't have speedometers or don't have working speedometers, or even if they do have working speedometers, many do not work under 10 miles an hour. So that would be a very difficult thing to achieve to really know how fast is 10 miles an hour. Uh, you could conceivably go out and uh, pull a wakeboard or surf at 10 miles an hour or less. Well, I don't think anyone wants that at nine o'clock at night. That's uh, kind of a reserve time for those late night pontoon rides and some safe uh, kayaking and uh, pedal boats and this type of thing. So uh, what we're uh, proposing to change is to change that 8.30 p.m. to 10 a.m. time, only the night time from a 10 mile per hour speed to a no wake speed. Uh, no wake may be somewhat ambiguous that it's hard to pin a specific speed down to that, but I think it, it it's pretty readily apparent if someone is making a wake or not. Uh, so that's been the main uh, gist and thrust of uh, so far of the Lake Committee uh, to come up with this suggestion or proposal to have this uh, rule change put before the board. As you said, Rick, uh, we want to be transparent and allow for a member discussion over the next month before we uh, put it up for a vote to, again, change the, the late night, the 8.30 p.m. to 10 a.m. from 10 miles an hour to no wake. Thank you, Paul. So uh, just to make sure that I know kind of broke up there in the beginning, but then you clarified it really well and we heard you, but just to make sure there's no question and we're talking about 8.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. I'm sorry, for, to, from uh, 10 miles an hour to no wake. That would that be the change. So that, that is correct, Rick. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. Just so everybody is aware and like you said, uh, Now's your time to, you know, provide that feedback. Uh, if you think it's a great idea, if you think it's the dumbest thing you've ever heard of or anywhere in between, um, we just need to know that so we can make an, an informed decision on, uh, you know, what everyone feels is the best way to go. So that's just, we don't really need anything. That's just uh, to get the information out. And then, and like you said, start that discussion. But now would be a good time too, as if, you could just give us an update, Paul, on what your committee has maybe the highlights so far, where you're at on the the lake study and, and how that's working out. Uh, as, as we said, Rick, it, there's a lot of things to consider. I left some of my notes inside, but I think I can do some of it from memory. There's a lot of different areas uh, of the lake that we're all trying to, we're all trying for better things. You know, the and so we, we've got that, that. So Paul, Paul keeps uh, apologize. Paul keeps coming in and out. A blend of we want to have the perfect. Yeah, I can see my little bar is kind of yellow here. Not that bar, my my strength yeah. bar. <laughs> yeah, we're losing you. You're kind of in and out. Yeah, my, my lovely assistant just brought me my notes. So <laughs> bear with me. Um, being on the lake, I do see a lot of things that are non-compliant with, with current rules. And I think a lot of that is uh, uh, ignorance, or I hope that it's ignorance rather than blatant disregard of existing rules, whether they are uh, Sandy Pines, Lake Monterey rules, or whether they are state of Michigan rules. So uh, some of the things we've talked about is, is perhaps putting together some type of uh, fairly concise member packet, just uh, maybe a, a 10 or 12 bullet point items uh, to remind members of the things that uh, you can do. 
and can't do on our lake uh, as an alcohol on the lake. You can go to Gun Lake and you can drink a beer on, on the boat, but not on Lake Monterey. So the idea is to get some of that information out there, get some type of form that perhaps the member uh, would turn back into us. Uh, and so we would know that they had a grasp of the most pertinent things that are out there. Uh, there's been discussion uh, to have more present on the, some type of marine officer uh, to help us through these very busy weekends because it's 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 scary out here on the weekend and it would be extremely valuable and I know we've all been scrambling because of, of personnel and that's completely understood uh, that's um, going to be a high focal point to help drive some of the uh, safety issues that uh, that we all see and experience on the lake uh, we're trying to figure out a way to deal with capacity. Again, when we talk about busy weekends, uh, it, it appears, and from everything that we read, that there are more boats on the lake being used, especially on peak times, than perhaps they shouldn't, uh, or what's most recommended. It's just extremely busy, which makes it difficult, <clears throat> pardon me, it makes it difficult not only safety-wise, but it's hard if you're if you're skiing and there's a lot of boat waves, of course, then the tubers, they love it. Then they have more boat waves. Uh, but it, it, it creates a kind of a, a chaos out here that's a little frightening. So we're, we're trying to wrap our hands on how to perhaps try to rein in some of the capacity. Uh, we're looking at uh, erosion as an issue. We've, we've seen it around the lake that erosion is an issue. Is this being caused by... Uh, the number of boats out there, of course, that has an effect. The types of boats, of course, that has an effect. Um, so we're, we're dealing with that uh, issue also. Uh, try, to, um, try to figure out a way to, to make it safe and try to make it as, as good for, for everyone. Need the new motor. Yeah. <laughs> well, have you gotten your modem upgrade yet? So, <laughs> I'm sorry. Have you gotten your modem upgrade yet? <laughs> uh, yes, I have. That's, <laughs> oh, I knew the answer to that's that. That's another discussion. You asked me to talk about Lake Committee, not motor. <laughs> yes, I have. And I'm You're still smiling. Out. Isn't that good? <laughs> so, yeah, it's sorry that I keep breaking up here, but. Um, the basically, the, the big areas are capacity, clarity of the lake, erosion, uh, fishing safety, uh, overall quality, uh, preservation. We, we want this to be around for our kids and grandkids uh, and awareness to make people aware. You know, having a, a, a perhaps a, a larger sign down on the on the boat ramp just to make more people more aware of just some some basic things, staying 100 feet away from docks, 100 and 150 feet away from other boats, uh, counterclockwise direction, no wake times, sorry, 10 mile an hour speed times, uh, those types of things, just just reminders out there to get get people aware of, of what's happening and, and how to make this, uh, how to make this a, a safer place and one we can all continue to enjoy because it is overall, it's our, it's our biggest asset in the park. Whether you use it or not, when you see the type of sales numbers that we're seeing, I know that um, the, the Yeah, where where Paul's going with the sale is, is uh, we have a lot a lot of new members here that um, either aren't reading the rule books or don't understand them. And well, hope, they hopefully, in, we'll have uh, they're they're on the lake and they're they're not abiding by the rules, and that's a safety issue. So great, all right. Right. Thanks, Paul. I know you can still hear us uh, and thank the uh, committee too on on behalf of the entire board. You guys have spent a lot of time and effort and. Uh, uh, we truly appreciate that. We are, we know that you ha have your final recommendation uh, for the future um, board discussion and, and member comment, but uh, we'll look forward to that. But in the meantime, thanks for everything as far as you guys working on that. Yeah, it's We're our pleasure. We hope, and hope to have, excuse me, have uh, Stephanie come to the board meeting next month to present mm -hmm. a full slate of uh, all the all the suggestions for us to take a look at. Thank you. Okay, item number B under new business, uh, same thing. This is uh, an updated board defined membership criteria. 
Uh, again, the information will be provided. It'll be out there, and then uh, no formal action will be taken until next month at the board meeting. But right. uh, you want to highlight that, Jeff? Sure. Uh, so this was brought to uh, the board's attention with in our bylaws, Article 1, Section 1, uh, qualifications that states membership in Sandy Pines is available to all individuals whose applications have been approved by the board. The board shall establish uh, criteria for admission of members. And then when we when we look for criteria in the handbook, there's a couple of spots. There's a membership definition, and then you have membership criteria, which is uh, really uh, prohibition of registered sex offenders, and, and that's that's the only criteria that we have out there. So again, as, as Rick stated, we were asked to add some, some additional criteria to uh, the handbook, and so we had um, originally eight uh, items on here, and I think we're going down to going down to six because we combined a couple. Um, but it, it reinforces other areas of the handbook that are really good items, such as uh, support Sandy Pines' mission of providing a happy and safe environment where individuals, families, and friends create a lifetime of memories through outstanding morals, character values, and ethics, um, possess the financial resources and ability to pay yearly dues, assessments, maintenance and care of the membership, personal property upon the membership and maintenance of the park. Um, that one reinforces the ability to pay the dues on time, um, maintains a primary residence outside of, the, of Sandy Pines, as we know in, in the other areas of the handbook. Um, Sandy Pines cannot be a permanent residence. It's a, we have the state law of 180 day rule, so this reinforces that as well. Um, outstanding character history that reflects no potential threat to the health, safety, and welfare of Sandy Pines members, associates, guests, staff, or others, or to Sandy Pines and Lake Monterey properties. Um, Possess the ability to provide oversight of associate members, grandchildren, and their invited guests. So again, that reinforces that members are responsible for who they bring into the park um, and possess the ability with or without accommodation to understand and adhere to all Sandy Pines and Lake Monterey bylaws and rules established within this handbook. Again, just reinforces that we're going to abide by the handbook and the bylaws. Um, and has not been convicted of an applicable felon, felony and or is not currently charged with an applicable felony. And that uh, goes um, towards the, uh, the SORA requirement as well that's in there. So we pulled different areas of the handbook that were highlighted as uh, good areas to say, hey, this is what a, a membership criteria should look like. So back to Rick's point, these two will uh, be drafted in resolution form. We'll post them uh, online. We can get member uh, membership feedback on that as well, and then we will uh, we'll take a vote next month. Thank you. And and again, this is just to help clarify, so there's not so much gray area, you know, uh, and take some of the, uh, you know, uh, not ability, but the, the be able to process it with some type of standard instead of just having so much. Uh, you know, what does it really mean? And this hopefully will highlight that and everybody can weigh in on whether you think it's too restrictive or, you know, or it needs to be more restrictive. I mean, but that right. we just need to be able to look at it and have some guidance so it's not just uh, open-ended. So that'll be out there, like Jeff said, and then the resolution will be presented at the next monthly board meeting. Item number C under new business is uh, amended board and committee confidentiality ethics code agreement um, there's always been a, a standing code of ethics and uh, confidentiality policy for board and committee members um, for many many years uh, this is just updating it to add some verbiage to where it gives the ability uh, it, it states in order to be a board of director i understand this code of ethics and confidentiality document must be signed I understand that a violation of this policy may lead to disciplinary action up to and including removal from the Board of Directors per the Sandy Pines bylaws, as well as an assessment of points, fines, and or suspension with respect to my Sandy Pines membership as directed by the Board of Directors and or the Park President. So 
in a nutshell, this was drafted by the legal counsel and uh, on what is legal to present. As far as uh, before, it was, uh, like I said, there was always a longstanding policy, but it, it really only had one outcome, and that was that the board at any time could vote to bring that member that they felt was in violation of the confidentiality agreement uh, to a vote of the membership to be removed from the board. So this gives the opportunity to have other sanctions, if you will, um, if it's proven that those violations have occurred for committee members or board members. So this really isn't a, a membership change or a rule change. This is a policy change as it directly relates to the board of directors and the committee meeting uh, members. So that's why it's under a resolution for consideration today. So. I know we had uh, lots of discussion on it uh, back and forth, and, and um, I will ask if there's any discussion or anybody wants to comment today. Yeah. Chad. But, um, paragraph three of this violates the um, bylaws. In paragraph three, uh, sentence three, it says, removal as a director on the board upon a vote of majority of the other board members if the board member who is removed as a director also serves as an officer, the board member shall be removed as an officer as well. That violates the bylaws, period. The bylaws state that a board member may removed. not be, be removed they without a vote of the members. That's correct. That's correct. So we can get that, we can get that changed. Yeah, the only way of the only way a board member and we we talked about this before the only way by uh, a board member can be removed is vote. is by vote by the membership right so, no, we so can, th th this is not appropriate so we can I, yeah. I have other other issues with it too but i guess in my mind it, it makes this a uh an item that we can't vote on today no, we're, we're, not voting voting on today. we're not voting on it today uh, there was a motion that was to be a motion so there's been no motion. I mean, okay. we haven't right. taken right. any action. They said we were going to discuss it. Yeah. Okay. So we can get that. We can get that updated. Okay. The the last part of it, I do have a problem. Uh, the president uh, basically works for the board, and and I think it's inappropriate for the president to be able to impose sanctions uh, against board members. Uh, uh, there's already a system in place. If somebody violates the confidentiality policy, the majority board members can vote to put it to the member vote. Um, once again, I think it's appropriate for somebody who we oversee to have the ability to impose sanctions against our membership, fines, uh, and up to suspension. Mm -hmm. So I don't agree with that either. Thank you. Any other comment? Nope. Hearing none. Okay, so Jeff will get that amended, and then you'll bring that back. Yep, we'll bring it back to the board for consideration at a, a future meeting. Thank you. All right, under uh, member comments, we did have some uh, write-in questions and comments, um, and Jeff's got them kind of highlighted here. I mean, we uh, collected them all and kind of some of the. The main ones, or all of them actually, are grouped into these areas, so I'll let Jeff kind of respond to those and then we can comment as appropriate. Okay, so the first uh, the first set of questions that have been coming in is uh, presidential flags that are flying throughout the park. And um, so the, the flags and signs really that we've been seeing out there for the upcoming presidential election. And... Uh, so we've been asked, hey, we need to we need to remove those. It says so in the bylaws. Uh, the the handbook, excuse me, the handbook um, is really focused in on our election, the board election signs and flags. Uh, there's no real uh, rule here at Sandy Pines that a flag or a sign uh, needs to be removed. There is. Uh, in the rules, the, the flags and the signs must be on your property. So if you want to put a Chicago Bear flag, the United States flag, United States of America flag, a Trump flag, a Biden flag, 
it has to be on your property so that your trailer, your shed, you can you can put it there. Um, we have seen flags on carts and talking with the PSO, we can allow those flags on carts as long as it is not hindering the ability to drive that cart. You know, if you have a giant flag on the back and then you've got people sitting on it and it's flapping around and it's it's in people's face or it's hindering you from driving that, blinding you from driving that cart, um, we will we will leave those on on the uh, on the carts. So um well, well, yep. Very fine yep. Too. You can personal property. Prop, yeah. Personal property. Okay. Um, so you you can put it on your boat as well. Um, you can't put them in the green space um, unless it's it, unless it's approved by the park. Um, we have had a couple of uh, calls on vulgar and inappropriate flags. Um, so I had a question that hey, what what's inappropriate? So the inappropriate definition will be you know at the at the discretion of the park and, and the public safety on what is inappropriate and what's not. Um, we have had a couple of flags removed uh, due to profanity on the flags. Uh, we've talked and addressed with those site members that they cannot fly those flags. Um, but from a park perspective, you know, we're not going to get into censoring what flag can, what can fly and what can't fly. If you have any questions on a flag, feel free to uh, call public safety or um, call administration and get a hold of me and then we can kind of direct you and, and answer any questions you have. License plates we already talked about. Jeff, could yes, you also um, talk about yard signs? Si sizes. So yard yard signs, um, again, we, we do have we do have some sizes on those, but when you look at those sizes, they are for the for sale signs and for our election signs. Um, <clears throat> signs have been a little tricky on that. We, from, from a park perspective, we would request no yard signs, um, but if you're gonna put a yard sign out there, then we're gonna, we're gonna ask that it be the same size as a, a for sale sign. No giant signs in, in the, in the uh, member site area. And again, no signs in the, in the green space. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, public safety office staffing, and this came in conjunction with uh, a couple of questions about the PPP loan. So the PPP loan uh, that Kimberly and the team did a, an excellent job in, in solidifying and getting us funding for, the PPP loan was based on your staffing level and your salary level at last year. And so Kimberly and team went through, filled all that out. We were approved. The PPP loan was accepted and that's what brought our staff back. If you remember when we were basically shut down in April and you know we started getting people back with member access to the park in May. Um, so when we brought everybody back, we were at that level that we needed to be. The, the short staffing that we've been running into for this year at public safety, at member service, those were the two highlighted areas mm -hmm. that were write-ins. Um, we've had resignations in those areas. Um, you know, without getting into details on the resignations, they can vary from, you know, anything, uh, health to whatever. They, we've had three resignations in public safety and we've had two resignations here in the administration office. Uh, we're just now filling those and recovering those uh, positions. And the hard part that was taking place, what was taking so long was um, the ability to try and get good people here that didn't want to come off of unemployment. It was really uh, a hindrance in trying to getting that staff here. Um, so they would rather take the extra $600 a week rather than work. So it took us a little bit of time to staff those, but the PPP loan was utilized appropriately. It got us to our levels. And then we wound up uh, having to um, recover from some uh, resignations. So thank you for the question on the, the PPP loan and the staffing. Uh, gazebos, decks, and porches. Jeff Hopkins and myself were reviewing this area in the handbook. 
but the specific question is in the in the handbook why is it a 10 foot wide deck why can't i have a 12 foot wide deck why can't i have a 14 foot wide deck um, and talking to the inspector the park inspector jeff hopkins he and i went through the area my understanding and our understanding is originally on average you have a 40 foot wide lot if you're going to put a 12 foot trailer on it 12 foot wide trailer you're going to put a 10 foot wide attached porch well not attached porch but a porch to that and then you're going to do another 10 foot deck you're now at 32 feet my math is correct and you have um, a four foot set off on both, sides. on both sides so now you're at 36 feet so that was the original thought process from from what i understand uh, however if we want to revisit that uh, you know the response that i'll be sending the individual on this one is make your recommendations send it to the park inspector send it to the rules committee and if we want to reevaluate that we can um, but what we have seen um, over the years from feedback from the park inspector is is um, the stuff that we're putting on the lots is is increasing 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 and now it's hindering people to park on their lots and, and to do some other things and it's it's getting into that four foot setback so we just got to make certain that we're not uh, we're not uh, violating that any questions on on that one okay um i do have a couple other ones real okay. quick i apologize we're, no no you're gonna bring up maybe the gazebos also i uh i i kind of lumped the gazebos in with oh, that okay. so okay. so i think one of the questions that jenny has brought up is there's there's questions about um detached gazebos and what some some say are attached gazebos is that where you're um, going i think the main thing was um why is it um limited to one why is it limited to one so jeff and i still are evaluating that one so again okay. historically it was back to you only have so much real estate on that and we want to make certain that it's within the guidelines um so we can get a ruling on the on the gazebos and we can come back with a recommendation um, if need be on the gazebos i don't have one at this time okay however the, the uh, there was some space from having permanent to gazebos in there from what i understand it in the past and that's why they um, allow you to not only one permanent gazebo but for extra comfort you're allowed to put up a portable one portable that can be taken down that same weekend yeah that yeah. to help the members out the the gazebos and and again not only is the the real estate on your on your lot and the the boundaries and the setback rules important but we also have the state come out and they do the four foot right the four the four foot rule so and what that is is if there's a fire you need to have certain structures on your site four foot away from each other to prevent the fire from spreading and continuing on to your lot and somebody else's lot so what we've seen is porches gazebos all crammed together one on top of the other um, we've had permanent structures um, as a gazebo on a porch and then we've had a separate one a collapsible or a, a, a portable one put there and they've been butted up right next to each other if we spread them apart then we should be fine but i will give you an answer on uh, a final answer on the gazebos okay okay great thank you and i think just i would like to reiterate i know we've had so much changeover in inspectors it's hard to keep an inspector i mean i would not want that job right <laughs> but i think as long as we are complying with the state rules and you know any i guess some i hate to say that things are up for interpretation i feel like we should abide by the state rules make sure we're doing what they say we should do so we continue to keep our campground license i think that's yep. the most yep. important thing Agreed. Yeah. that we should be doing yep. and i think on, on that we talked about uh, the rules and 
these roles were put together well 50 years 50 ago, years right? ago. And it's at the point where, where the rules were established were probably because of things happening during that period of time or and to keep up with the state. But after 50 years, I'm, I'm thinking this board should seriously consider having the rules committee go through the rule book and, and break it down and, and talk about and see which ones are are not needed now or, or need to be updated because some of those are off. Right. And I, an example, another example of why when I say that is like, there is a rule out there that says stakes can't be any higher than six inches off the ground. And it has to boat be- Boat stakes. Boat stakes. And it has to be no higher than the water level. Well, is that a, is that a, a smart thing for us now? I mean, there's, there's a lot of things in there that were probably pertinent in this time, but we really should be serious about reviewing that whole rule book. Yes, I agree. And that is why we have those various committees. So we can look to the rules committee. We can look to safety and security to, to do a detailed scrub of that and bring recommendations. And, let's clean and that wouldn't up. be a bad process, not just this time, but every, every, 10 every, years, every I mean, whatever you feel is appropriate. I mean, to look at it and see, is it really relevant or? Uh, yeah. yeah, right. There Agreed. And to Jenny's point, making sure that the state is also okay with what it is that we say under the, you know, yeah. in our boundaries right. that is okay for a campground license. Right. Yeah, we yeah, we have to do that or we're yep. not going to be no matter how nice it is on your spot. <laughs> right. 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 Um a couple of additional write-ins. So, uh road road paving over by phase 3 and uh shuffleboard and or pickleball courts in phase 3. Uh so we we continue to have the the road paving on the the capital plan um to, to get that done, our, our constraint on that continues to be, from what I understand, um, it's kind of a shared road. So Salem Township is, is in with us. Uh, we have some money allocated from uh, our funds. Salem Township is in on us. Uh, Monterey, uh, some days they're in, some days they're out. And then when we go to ask to pull the trigger on that, they're, they're out. So um, that is our constraint right now. It continues to be on our list. And uh, we're going to continue to work on it this fall to try and get a date for that. Uh, pickleball and shuffleboard, uh, as we go into the fall season, we'll reevaluate now that the budget has been approved, what we can do, what we can't do. Um, we do have those items on the list, um, and we'll see what we can do for phase three. Um, another recommendation, and this is actually a, a recommendation. Um, excessive speeding of golf carts and there's a lot a lot of um an increased number of golf cart speeding so uh, the suggestion to help curb speeding on golf carts uh, can we consider increasing points and fines and um so we we are looking at the in the off season here the, the points and fines um back to when i looked at those those were done i don't know five years ago i think is that i don't think it's a matter of points and fines just to interject i think it's a matter of or enforcing them enforcing get, get them. out there and enforce them yeah. i mean yeah. you so enforcement's the, education yeah. yep. exactly yep. exactly so so that is a great segue brian into i teed um, you up for that one you did thank you um <laughs> and this goes back to part of the staffing with pso why are we not seeing psos out there anymore what's going on um we're staffed finally at the levels that we were last year. Um, in my opinion, I think we might still be lightly staffed and we're going to take a look at that in the off season. But I asked Keith and the team to pull some numbers. In June, their calls were up 105%. And when we say calls, it could be, hey, we, we saw somebody speeding, um, you know, go have a conversation with them, go write them up, medicals. Um, you know, there's a issue at the marina. Um, so any call that comes in uh, to that station or while they're in patrol, where they do their normal patrol, a call come into the office, again. Up from, 105 over May when May was light or up 105 no, over last year? year over year. Okay. Year over year. So um, 105%. And so July was up uh, over 30%. So what, what, Again, sitting in the public safety office for two weeks, you know, you start asking these questions and you start learning these things. Um, they have a patrol log and they have a set checklist that 
they do every day. You have an admin, an administrative person sitting there answering the phones and doing the computer work. And then somebody will grab that patrol log and then they'll go out and they'll start in phase one and they'll drive around. They'll check on buildings, they'll check on member sites, they'll um, check on CCs. There's a specific checklist that they do. If they get called, they have to go off of that list. So they're not gonna sit at a CC and check on mass. If they get a call, they're gonna go get a call because somebody's having a medical. Those types of calls have been up 105% year over year. June last year to June this year, and over 30% July last year to this year. So they're trying to enforce the points and the in the in the fines and the violations. Um, there's other things that are taken away from that, and that's where we go back to this fall. Are we staffed appropriately? That gotcha. Okay. Um, the last one that I have is. Um, seems strange that the board of director meetings and the face to phase meetings are closed, but all the crazy events loaded with people are open. Please explain to me why. So again, our, our board of director meetings and our face to phase meetings are closed because we hold those indoors and the executive orders have been anybody, um, those, those kind those meetings have to be capped at 10 people. And if you can't social distance, you have mass. The events, everybody counting? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was hoping we didn't have yep. 11 in here. Yep. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> and um, Jim, yeah. And Jim. So um, that's why there's the difference. Face-to-phase -phase meetings historically were held at the phase one pavilion. If you remember, we were gonna have the last face-to-phase -phase, um, this month at the phase one pavilion. And then we had to cancel that because the order came back to 10 people or less indoors. Outdoors, um, you can cap that at, I believe it's 100. It went back to 100. It started at, it went to 100 to 250, I believe, and then it went back to 100. So that that's the difference mm -hmm. and why we're, we're separating those. And those are the, uh, the only ones that I have. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, that brings us down to what? Not on here, but I mean, any other board comments before we adjourn? Anything good for the order? Anybody? Hey, I just want to say it was a pleasure serving with you. And, and, Thank you. Uh, and you were a great leader in, in this past year, and sorry to see that you didn't run again, but hey, you can still get ice cream. <laughs> That's it. Oh, we'll always do that. Thank you. We told Rick nobody leaves the firm. So <laughs> we know how to find them. There yeah. you go. Scary. Hearing that, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. It's been moved and supported to adjourn the meeting. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, thank you.